Hi traders, how are you doing today? Let me uh, know how was your day today. Mine was great. Um, had a fantastic uh, trading day today. Up $3,500 approximately. Hope you did well too. So I'm here for any question um, you have. Trying to make this um, a weekly gathering. Yeah, hi. How's the sound like? Uh, can you hear me well? Like to know that. Yeah. Hey, Ori. Jen Young. Dustin. Good to see you all here. Thank you. So coming off uh, of a trading week, which um, I personally just traded uh, two days uh, in the last week, which is quite rare for me. Uh, usually I do not miss a trading day, but uh, it was a busy week and somehow I missed uh, some trading day. But both of them were green, very green days. So really enjoyed. How was your day today? Did you happen to trade today? Did you do good? Make money? Lose money? Let, us, let me know now if you're willing to share. Did you trade with us today in the trading room? For those of you who don't know, we have a live trading room. It's a free trading room on YouTube, so if you guys are interested in um, in joining us, it's the, you'll find some links in our, in our bio uh, for the uh, live trading room that we have and for the free trading room that we have. So you're very welcome to join. Okay, so I'm here to answer any questions. This is um, a meeting that we have. Well, if you have any question, you like me to answer anything that is trading related or not trading related. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know. You have problems with your wife, with your girlfriend. Uh, ask me anything. You'll get an answer. Maybe not the right one, but uh, you'll get. So, let's continue. Any questions coming up? I'm ready to answer. Like if you have any difficulties in trading, um, anything you want me to take a look at, I could look at too. Even stocks, how do I identify? Um, well, first question is, I see I have here, let me go back to this one. How do you identify uh, your stop so quickly? Um, Logan, what I do really when I take a look at a new trade, I always, the first thing I'm looking at is how much am I risking? Now, you may not know me personally, but I, I hate, I hate uh, losing money. So more than other people, really, that's one of um, the things I'm good at, lose, hating losing money, which is good for trading. So the first thing I do is I look for my stop. I look at um, the technical stop loss intraday technical stop loss. That's not how to find. I mean, one look at the chart and you can tell, definitely tell where is the stop loss. You know, uh, I'm very experienced at looking at charts. So if some of you are just novice traders, uh, it takes you a while to understand because you're looking at the charts, you're looking at the five minute formations and um, or one minute formation, whatever you're trading. And then you're looking at the chart and it takes you a little bit, uh, a little while to come out with the, okay, so there's a stop price. Here's the reversal. Let's put a stop right over there. And then, you know, to measure the, the distance between your planned entry point and your stop loss is not that hard. So you can do that rather quickly. But for me, I'm experienced. So when I take a look at the chart, I don't really have to think much. For me, the chart formation is very, very clear. When I take a look at the chart, it's like, I'll, I'll, I'll joke about it a bit, but it's not really that far away from what I'm about to say. It's like looking at the matrix. So if you've seen the matrix, if you've seen the movie, when you look at the chart for so many years, like I do 19 years by now, and you do it for several hours a day, and it becomes very clear. You really, 
And again, it's a kind of a joke, but it's not really. I mean, you look at the chart and you see the matrix. You, you see the chart, you don't think in terms of candlesticks. You don't think in terms of support and resistance. You take a look at the chart and it's very clear to you where's your entry, where's your target, where's your stop loss. Now, if you're not experienced as I do, there are several indicators which you should use, which you definitely should use. And of course, support, resistance and stuff like that. So it may take you a little bit more than time than I do. But when I look at the chart very quickly, when I say very quickly, it takes me less than a second to understand where's my, where's my entry, where's my target, where's my stop. It doesn't always take me a second to make a decision where, whether I want to get into the trade or not. But it's very clear to me uh, how it's done. So it works very fast because I'm very experienced. Any more questions by now? Let me see. Do I give loans? <laughs> Sometimes. I do, really. To friends, family. Yeah, that was a great day. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Uh, do I always uh, use market trade? Uh, Andrew asks here. Um, uh, traders, for those of you who don't know the way I trade, I trade CFDs. I did trade uh, stocks for many, many years. In the recent few years, I trade CFDs. Since CFDs were available, and they are available, and you can trade them too, uh, CFDs are much more liquid than stocks. So I moved from limit orders, which I had to use when I was trading stocks. So if you guys are trading stocks, not CFDs, you should be using limit orders. Sometimes, in very rare occasions, you should be using market orders. But if you're trading uh, CFDs like I do, I have no more than a three cent uh, guaranteed, guaranteed entry. So if I'm clicking the market orders, I'll be in and out much faster. And I have unlimited liquidities at three cents maximum. So that makes it much more reasonable to move uh, to use market orders. So yes, I use market orders because I trade CFDs and you can do it too. Again, look at our bios. If you want to join us, we'll help you do that. Much easier to trade. CFDs are much, much easier to trade uh, than uh, the limit order, than, than, sorry, so, than stocks. I mean, liquidity, the execution is much faster. There's a lot of advantages. There are some disadvantages too. But for me as a trader, it... It's a different world, much better. Uh, another question here from Shola. How, how do you know when to short? <laughs> well, let me tell you this. I prefer shorting, so I first look for shorts. This today was not a typical day. I had today, let me see. I had today uh, six trades, uh, from which five long, one short. A very, very Untypical day, very untypical day. So usually I prefer shorting. Uh, I do come across longs and I, and I like them and I take them, but I, I, I initially look for shorts. And the reason I look for shorts is because, you know, stocks are all about uh, fear and greed. Uh, greed when the stock is moving up, you ride it as a trader, you try to enjoy it. And of course, fear when the stock is coming down. Now, what do you think? What works better, fear or greed? <laughs> Uh, I don't. I don't think I need to wait for your answer. Well, traders, uh, fear works much better than greed. So when the stock is coming down, when the stock is coming down, uh, it's it's usually much better. They are moving much faster. For example, we shorted today. Oh, sorry, just moved that. We shorted today a stock that is uh, named called C O R T. Uh, we shorted this one under ten dollars. Uh, $10 are a great opportunity to short. When stock is coming down under $10, it's usually a point where stock is crashing. So we enjoyed it as it came down from $10 to $9.65 in, 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 in just a few minutes, three minutes or so. Now, why did that happen? It happened because, well, fear. But then you need to add another ingredient here. The fear for a price which is under $10. When stocks coming down under $10, they tend to crash and they crash faster under $10 because 90% of institutional traders are not allowed to trade stocks under $10. And that means a lot of investors who are familiar with this rule, or of course traders who are familiar with this rule, they rather short it under $10. And it's a whole number and there's a lot of buyers at whole numbers. So when the stock is coming under $10, always remember this, you want to short it. 
Um, well, not always. There are some. I'm not going to get into details, but um, I, I look for I look for more shorts because they work better. My success rate in shorting stocks is better than my success rate in going long. So I rather short. So how do I know when to short? I look for technical formations. I look for stocks that are gapping down dramatically. Uh, the best system I use is stocks that are gapping down dramatically. So when a stock is coming down, usually more than 3%, that would be a candidate. So the first thing I do before I start trading, I, I have, you see right here on the back, you see this screen over here? That's the screen where I'm following my stocks. So when I started, I'm starting to edit, an hour before the market starts, and then I review it 10 minutes before and so on. So just before I start trading, I, I, I upload to all of these small charts that you're seeing here, uh, different stocks that are gapping either down or up. Um, most of them will be stocks that are gapping down, a few stocks that are gapping up, and those who are, which are gapping down, they'll be my main candidate for the short for the day, and um, usually they do well. Well, I, 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 I'm successful at 68% of the stocks that I'm picking. How do I pick stocks? Well, I, that, that was, I didn't see that question, um, but that was really, the, uh, as, as I just explained it, I, 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 I take a look at uh, a very important tool that I have, which is a top 20, you see it's right, sorry, where is it? Yeah, right over here, the top 20. So the top 20 shows me the gaps, the, the, the pre-market gaps. So I get ready before the market. It takes me no more, more, no more than 15 minutes, even 10 to 15 minutes. So I get ready. All of the stocks that I'm trading usually would be here on this list, pre-market list. And then I would put them up on my, uh, on my charts. I would put them up on my charts and then uh, intraday I would just follow them. And so that would be my bread and butter. Some, and, and of course, a lot of trades are coming from my trading room members. Some of the trades I took today are posted in our trading room. Um, I'm following the picks that uh, our traders are using and I'm trading them too. Excuse me, looking for more questions here. So just scrolling down a little bit. If I missed your questions, let me know. Hmm. What do I know about hedge accounts in TradeNet? That the possible to get it, undo it. Uh, hedged accounts. You, you're talking about uh, TFS, I guess, not TradeNet. Uh, so TradeNet and TFS. So you, you're probably trading a TFS account and you hedged. It's possible. Um, well, there's, there, there are some traders uh, which who are trading a TFS account and are being hedged. Uh, most of the traders that are being hedged are hedged anywhere between, well, all of the traders are being hedged anywhere between zero to 100%. It's not only traders that are, I mean, most of the traders are being hedged. It depends on the broker, on, on the way that the broker wants to hedge his trades. For example, some stocks may be hedged for the day. Maybe Apple today is a big mover and it may be hedged. So every trader can who trades Apple today may be hedged. And then there are traders who have typical style of trading, which are going to be hedged a little bit more than other traders. And some traders may get to the point where they are being hedged uh, more than other. Uh, I'm certainly being hedged more than other. So I don't know about, um, about you, but uh, you, you, you probably don't want to change the way you trade. Therefore, I don't see a way that if you're being hedged, uh, whatever, how much is it being edged? I don't see a way that you can go, um, that you can you can do without it. I mean, that you can change it or anything like that. But uh, definitely, plenty of traders are being hedged. You're still trading CFDs, but you're being hedged. Not all of your trades, very likely, but most of them could be. How do you know if a stock is a 20, 30, or 50 cent move? It's very um, easy to notice that, uh, Titi. Uh, you just look at the personality of the stock that you're trading. Every stock has its own personality. Some are just stocks that you don't want to trade. For example, if you tell me the name Bank of America, BAC symbol, I would like to trade this one unless there's a special day because the personality of BAC is just terrible. It just trades in few cents up, a few cents down. And there's plenty of other CMCSA, for example. 
notorious for this. Um, no volatility, nothing uh, interesting. I don't like to trade this one. So there's uh, some stocks that I just know I don't want to trade them. Microsoft, okay? Some stocks I just know I don't want to trade them. And the rest, I just watch. I don't remember each and every one's personality. You just watch the five minute candles. You go back even a day before and you look at the personality. How far did it go once it broke out of uh, resistance? Just take a look at that. Of course, if it's the first few minutes, it's hard to say, but then you can look at yesterday's move. And then during the day, it's very easy to notice. Just look for reversals, look for breakouts, look for breakdowns, and just take a look and see how far did it move after the last uh, few breakouts, breakdowns, reversals, and so on. Again, for me, when I take a look at that, that wouldn't take me more than two seconds to realize uh, how far they can move. But... Um, Maybe a little bit more for unexperienced traders, but it's very, very easy to notice uh, what is the personality, personality of the stock. Um, I see there's uh, Jacob here who really recommends my book. Thank you very much. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, uh, I did write a book. I'm just actually looking at it right now, but I do not find the English version. There's like nine languages. Oh, here it is. Sorry. So if you're interested, I didn't uh, come here to sell books, but it's on Amazon. It's called uh, The Market Whisperer, and it's like a big book. It's like, uh, I don't know, 350 pages or so. I'm not sure. Um, but it's one of the Amazon's best sellers. And if you like, look for it uh, under my name or the book. And it comes in different languages, like nine different languages. This one, Russian. So if you guys are interested, it comes in Russian, Italian, Spanish, French, and more. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, glad you liked it. Okay, any more questions? Oh, come on. Leave this embo thing away. Don't touch this. This is a dog. You don't touch it. I'll take a look. I'll take a look, but don't touch it. Maybe, maybe something has changed with this one, but guys, this is a very dangerous stock. It's a $9 stock, as I mentioned, most, um, <laughs> don't touch it. <laughs> Please don't touch it. Uh, it's a $9 stock. Uh, it's a terrible stock to trade. It's a stock that is only being handled by, um, by gamblers. There are some stocks that you should be trading, um, many. There's uh, approximately 3,000 uh, shares in the market that have over 1 million shares and are over $10 and so on. Embot is not one of them. It's a stock that was recently down. It came up very strong. That's why a lot of people love it. But the problem is the people who love it are the gamblers. The institutional traders are not trading this. Beep. I want to say something. I want. They don't trade this stock. So don't get involved in a stock that institutional traders are not touching with a two meter stick. Don't get involved in this kind of stocks. You will lose your money. I promise you, you will lose your money. And if you will make some money um, in a few trades, I still promise you that if you keep on trading this same stock over and over again, and not only this one, other stocks that have the same kind of personality, you will be losing your money. You can only trade stocks that are being traded by institutional traders because they are the only ones who has rules. And you need to know the rules. And if you do know the rules, you can trade these stocks with a nice success, over 60%. If you have more than 60%, you can, you can become a very uh, <laughs> rich trader. So you can definitely do a lot of money by trading uh, stocks that are traded by institutional traders. But if you looking at a stock that is being traded by gamblers and almost zero institutional traders, then it's a wild, wild west. So sometimes you can make a lot of money, but then you get a bullet. At the end of the day, you get a bullet in your, in your head. Just don't get across these kind of stocks. Don't gamble, guys. You're here to make money. You're not here to, to play games, okay? We're here to make money. Sometimes we enjoy ourselves but, uh, and play games, especially... If you're flying to Vegas, 
trying to gamble, you want to do some gambling, go to Vegas. Here in the trading room, here in trading, if you trade from home, <laughs> no free drinks. In Vegas, you probably get some free drinks. Did I miss any question? I'm bot, yeah, I'm not touching this. Uh, what do you think about uh, trading market type instead of limits? Yeah, I talked about that uh, earlier, sorry. Uh, do you teach others to trade? Um, I do, I mean, that's what I do. <laughs> um, my main occupation is actually not teaching, but uh, uh, just go to tradenet.com and we'll be very, very happy to help you learn. That's what we do, we teach people how to trade. Mm. How can you, uh, yeah, I trade CFD, so how can CFDs can be hedged? I'm not sure I understand this uh, question. CFDs are being, uh, when you trade CFDs, you're, 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 you're using a platform that is run by a broker, and a broker must hedge. According to regulation, the broker must hedge. So when, when you're trading CFDs, the broker has to hedge. Not all of your trades, sometimes some of your trades, but has to hedge trades. Uh, is it guaranteed? It's not guaranteed three cents. Yes, it is. Uh, the name of my trading platform, I, I use Colmex. I use the Colmex platform. Um, if you're outside the US, you can open a Colmex platform. It's C-O-L-M-E-X. Uh, if you're within the US, you cannot because Colmex is regulated in uh, in, uh, in Europe, uh, has a, uh, a European regulation, which is great. It means also deposit insurance and stuff like that. And uh, you can open a Colmex account if you're interested. Um, and I see here that uh, the trade and support already put it up. Or if you are in the States and you would like to trade uh, Colmex, you cannot, but you can join us our in our programs, our funded accounts programs, and then since it's not your trading platform, you can actually trade the same platform I do, but that is through TEFX, if you're interested in that. So we really look forward if you're interested in uh, getting some education. Um, we don't sell accounts, so if you're trying to buy an account, it's impossible. We are selling education, so if you pay for education, you will be eligible for a funded account. What's the point of the big capital? I'm sorry, I did not understand that. No, if you have a, an account with 600K, you do not have a 3,500. Oh, the daily stop loss. So you're thinking this way, you have a $600,000 funded account and you want to have more than $3,500 daily stop loss? I don't think that the, the company that provides a 600,000 account will be happy if you lose more than 3,500. No, I don't think they will. And since it's not your money, it's their money, they call the shots. They will decide whether you are allowed to lose more than $3,500. And tell you what, if somebody would stop me from losing $3,500, it is my account, you know? my Colmex account. I should have a stop loss at $3,500. Now I'm very experienced, so when I'm losing more, sometimes more than $3,500, and I know how to stop myself, I'm very experienced. But I go back many years ago, and I had a lot of difficulties in days when I was losing 10 grand and stuff like that. Believe me, $3,500, that's a good number. You should have a stop loss at $3,500. Don't complain, it's enough. Seriously, ask for it. It's not bad. Uh, no, we're not putting up on the date on, on our YouTube channel. It's going to be here in, uh, in uh, Instagram, I guess. How do I know which stocks to trade and if I'm getting into stocks uh, under $10? I very rarely trade stocks under $10. Very, very rarely take, trade stocks under $10. Again, uh, you don't find any institutional traders in stocks under $10. That has to be a very special occasion. I, I wouldn't say it does not happen, but it's very rare. Today I shorted the stocks at $10, but that doesn't count because that's a different system. Um, how do I know which stocks to trade? I mentioned that earlier, uh, how I look for stocks uh, 
uh, pre-market and then I post it up and then I follow them, usually stocks that are gapping up or down. What type of uh, price actions are you looking for short? I look for stocks, as I mentioned earlier, that are gapping uh, down more than 3%. The reason I look for stocks more than 3% is because fear works better in stocks that are under 3%. Plus, institutional traders are not allowed Usually, no, they are allowed. They, they, they usually are out of the game, and usually the fear factor is very, very strong. So I'm looking for stocks that are gapping down more than 3%. If I don't find them, then I look for 2%. But usually, my success rate will be higher with stocks which are down more than 3%. And these are the ones that are my first candidates. Now, I have to say this. There's so many systems of trading stocks. I don't have more than a few systems I use myself. You know, to develop a system takes years, years, years of practice to develop one system. So I, ha I have myself a few systems I'm using that took me many, many years to develop. One of them is shorting stocks which are down more than 3%. I have other systems too, but this, this will be my main system for shorting stocks if you asked how do I look for my stocks. Uh, what should a new trader focus on? Um, well, good point. Uh, a new trader should usually focus in um, basic rules, you know, uh, have the max stop loss limit, uh, do not, do, do, don't go across most, m m m your max loss uh, limit for the day, uh, don't over trade, I would suggest never trade more than three trades a day, never trade more than three trades a day, uh, keep the rules. Keep the rules, uh, usually trade small size. So just the basic stuff. When you're just starting out, the most important thing for a trader, not only starters, is to keep the rules. Uh, to, to be the point where you respect the rules. Uh, and at, at, once you uh, come to the point where you, you, are, uh, you are keeping the rules and you are disciplined, then you can become a successful trader. So discipline would be your first um, your first, um, uh, uh, the, the most important thing for you to accomplish at the beginning of your trading career is having discipline. Don't over trade. This is one of the, the one of the things that I'm sure everybody's teaching you. Uh, don't over trade. So again, not more than three trades. Use small size. And again, discipline, 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 and uh, discipline for the basic rules, really. Uh, how was my day? My day was cool. Was nice. Uh, up thirty-five hundred dollars. I'll try and show you that. Maybe I can. I don't know if you can see that, uh, but there's my trading day right over here. I hope you can see something. I don't know if you do. So that was my <laughs> trading day. And now I have to set up my camera again. I don't know if you've seen that or not. Um, I use a lot of, uh, yeah, I, I use VWAP a lot, uh, absolutely. Um, uh, MA200, Jacob, I would use for the daily, um, for, for picking up stock on the daily. I do swing trades too. So that would be things that I use. Um, okay, traders, um, I'm sorry, I, I did not answer all of your questions, but um, it's, as we've been doing this for 30 minutes, I don't want to go too long. So that would be my, my, last, uh, my last question I'm going to answer now, Fadi Nassar. So Fadi, how many screens should I have? Uh, as many as possible, Fadi. I mean, I wouldn't suggest for a new trader to start like four screens like that, you, you, but you definitely need more than one. So if you're just starting out traders, always use two screens. This could be your laptop and one screen attached to your laptop. Every laptop can attach another screen. So if you have your laptop with one more screen, you're doing good for a start. You do not need to follow so many stocks that I do. It's just going to confuse you. You do not need to do the same things I do. It's just going to confuse you. So if you can afford a full screen setup, which also requires a stronger computer, if you can afford that, fine, go ahead and have it. I mean, the costs are not that much. But if you can't, or if you're just starting out and you don't really know if you want to become a trader, use your laptop, add another screen, use your desktop and add another screen. It's, 
it's not that much. I mean, to, uh, it doesn't cost that much. And you can definitely, definitely um, use more screens. I mean, but you don't need more than four. I used to have, at some time, I had um, eight screens. And then I moved down to six screens. And then I decided I don't want to trade with more than four. So right now I'm trading with four screens and that's it. And that's it. And I have another uh, location at my other home that I use one huge uh, screen. Uh, I'll be there next week, so maybe you can see that on, uh, on my videos. So that's it, traders. I'm not going to answer any more questions here. I'm sorry. It's just getting a bit late. So next time, just be the first to ask and I'll, <laughs> I'll make sure I answer them. Um, really want to thank you for being here with me. Uh, it was fun. Uh, I wish you all a great, great weekend. Uh, hope you enjoy this week. And again, uh, look at our bio for some links uh, so you can join us for free rides. I mean, trading room. Uh, you can even get my trading book, uh, first part of it for free. Uh, if you're interested, just go to Amazon. It's like uh, $9, I guess, or something like that. Uh, Kindle or a little, bit, a little bit more if you want the printed version, which I suggest you should get. So it was fun. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. And I hope to see you here next week because we're probably going to do that weekly now. <laughs> I'll see you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you too. Glad you enjoyed. I see I missed quite a lot of questions. I'm sorry, but uh, I really wanted to answer your questions uh, in the best way I can. So, you know, maybe I should keep, I, I should make it shorter the next time and just try and answer more questions. See about that. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.